Hello students, welcome back to the science class. In this video, we are going to continue our lesson which is about the nervous systems or coordination. So without further ado, let's begin our lesson. Muscle tissue is made up of special muscle cells that have the ability to contract when stimulated so they can generate a force producing movement. There are three types of muscle tissue in the body, skeletal muscle tissue or also known as triadic muscle tissue, cardiac muscle tissue, and smooth muscle. Let's take a look at the difference between those three muscle tissue at the table here. You can find the table on your textbook page 344. Structure of striated muscle a muscle such as a biceps is made up of thousands of muscle fibers. Each muscle fiber is a very specialized cell with a highly organized arrangement of contractile proteins in the cytoplasm surrounded by the cell surface membrane. Some biologists prefer not to call it a cell because it contains many nuclei. Instead, they prefer the term syncytia to describe the multinucleated muscle fiber. The cell surface membrane is the sarcolemma, the cytoplasm is sarcoplasm, and the endoplasmic reticulum is sarcoplasmic reticulum or SR. The cell surface membrane has many deep enfoldings into the interior of the muscle fiber, called transverse system tubules or T-tubules for short. The membranes of the sarcoplasmic reticulum have huge numbers of protein pumps that transport the calcium ions into the sinister nai of the SR. The sarcoplasm contains a large number of mitochondria, often packed tightly between the myofibrils. These carry out aerobic respirations, generating the ATP that is required for the muscle contractions. Each myofibril is made of yet smaller components called filaments. Parallel groups of thick filaments lie between groups of thin ones. The thick filaments are made mostly of myosin, whilst the thin ones are made mostly of actin. The most striking thing about a muscle fiber is its stripes or striations. What causes the stripes? The darker parts of the stripes, the A-bands, correspond to the thick or myosin filaments. The lighter parts, the I-bands, are where there are no thick filaments, only thin or actin filaments. The very darkest parts of the A-band are produced by the overlap of the thick and the thin filaments, while the lighter area within the A-band, known as the H-band, represents the part where only the thick filaments are present. A line, known as the Z line, provides an attachment for the actin filaments, while the M line does the same for the myosin filaments. The part of the myofibril between the two Z lines is called a sacromere. Structures of thick and thin filaments. Thick filaments are composed of many molecules of myosin, which is a fibrous protein with a globular head. Within the thick filament, many myosin molecules all lie together in a bundle with their globular heads all pointing away from the M line. The main component of the thin filaments, actin, is a globular protein. Many actin molecules are linked together to form a chain. Two of these chains are twisted together to form a thin filament. Also, twisted around the actin chains is a fibrous protein called tropomyosin. Another protein, troponin, is attached to the actin chain at regular intervals. How Muscle Contract Muscle contraction is at the basis of the skeletal movements. Skeletal muscles are composed of muscle fibers, which in turn are made of repetitive functional units called sarcomeres. Each sarcomere contains many parallel, overlapping thin or actin and thick or myosin filaments. The muscle contracts when these filaments slide past each other, resulting in shortening of the sarcomere and thus the muscle. This is known as the sliding filament theory. Cross-bridge cycling forms the molecular basis for the sliding movement. 
Muscle contractions is initiated when muscle fibers are stimulated by a nerve impulse and calcium ions are released. The troponin units of the active myofilaments are bound by calcium ions. The binding displaces tropomyosins along the myofilaments, which in turn exposes the myosin's binding sites. At this stage, the head of each myosin unit is bound to an ADP and the phosphate molecule remaining from the previous muscular contractions. The myosin head releases these phosphates and bind to the actin myofilaments via the newly exposed myosin binding site. The two myofilaments glide past one another propelled by a head-first movement of the myosin units powered by the chemical energy stored in their heads. As the unit moves, they release the ATP molecules bound to their heads. The gliding motion is halted when the ATP molecules bind to the myosin's head, thus severing the bonds between the myosins and actin. The ATP molecules are now decomposed into ADP and the phosphate with the energy released by these reactions stored in the myosin heads ready to be used in the next cycle of movement. The myosin heads resume their starting points along the actin myofilaments and can now begin a new sequence of actin binding. The presence of the future calcium ions will trigger a new cycle. Stimulating muscle to contract Skeletal muscle contracts when it receives an impulse from a neuron. An impulse moves along the axon of the motor neuron and arrives at the presynaptic membrane. Figure 15.29 shows the sequence of the events that follows the arrival of the impulse at a motor end plate. First, an action potential arrives. Second, the action potential causes the diffusion of the calcium ions into the neuron. Third, the calcium ions cause vesicles containing acetylcholine to fuse with the presynaptic membrane. Fourth, acetylcholine is released and diffuses across the synaptic clefts. Fifth, acetylcholine molecules bind with the receptors in the sarcolemma, causing them to open channel proteins for sodium ions. 6. Sodium ion diffuse in through the open channels in the sarcolemma. This depolarizes the membrane and initiates an action potential which spreads along the membrane. 7. The depolarization of the sarcolemma spreads down T tubules. 8. Channel proteins for the calcium ions opened and calcium ions diffuse out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. 9. Calcium ions bind to troponin. Tropomyosin moves to expose myosin binding sites on the actin filaments. Myosin heads from the cross bridges with thin filaments and the sarcomere shortens. Providing ATP for muscle contractions. A contracting muscle uses a lot of ATP. The very small quantity of ATP in the muscle fibers in the resting muscle is used up rapidly once the muscle starts to contract. More ATP is produced by respiration, both aerobic respiration inside the mitochondria and when that cannot supply ATP fast enough, also the lactic fermentation in the sarcoplasm. Muscles also have another source of ATP, produced from a substance called creatine phosphate. They keep stores of this substance in their sarcoplasm. It is their immediate source of energy once they have used a small quantity of ATP in the sarcoplasm. Hormonal Communication the control of by the nervous systems is very fast. However, it is also very expensive in terms of energy needed for pumping sodium and potassium ions to maintain the resting potential and in protein synthesis to make all the channels and pump proteins. A much cheaper alternative is to use hormones that are secreted in tiny quantities and dispersed around the body and blood. Homostatic functions such as the control of the blood glucose concentrations and the water potential of the blood need to be coordinated all the time, but they do not need to be coordinated in hurry. Hormones are ideal for controlling these functions. I think that's all about our lesson today. Don't forget to do the SSS on my Bye!